Hey everyone, with winter approaching in the Northern Hemisphere, today we're taking a look at something that could have a big impact on your winter weather, the system known as La Nina. Plus, we'll be hearing about its brother, El Nino. I'm Will Triggs, and joining me is meteorologist Rachel Dunsing. Hey Rachel. Hey Will, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Great to talk about, about a little La Nina with you today. Let's get into it. Late last month, the Climate Prediction Center announced that La Nina conditions are in place in the tropical Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. So for starters, what are La Nina conditions? Yeah, so La Nina is exactly what you said. So we have cooler waters in the tropical Pacific Ocean. Um, that also means we have slightly stronger trade winds going east to west in that part of the ocean as well, which actually does a little bit more upwelling and bringing up more of those cooler waters, which in turn sort of uh, brings up more of those cooler conditions and kind of keeps La Nina in place. But La Nina is, as we mentioned, the cool phase of El Nino Southern Oscillation, otherwise known as ENSO. So it's both La Nina as well as El Nino. And sometimes we forget there's technically a third phase in here as well, which is neutral. It's neither La Nina or totally El Nino. It's sort of close to where we expect the long-term average. But yes, the Climate Prediction Center basically said, we have La Nina conditions in place. We expect them to run through pretty much the winter. And we know that that can have an impact on different kind of uh, winter weather, especially across North America, but across the world as well. Right, okay. So running through February, we think, what does that mean for, for winter weather? Yeah, so it really does depend a lot on your location. So a La Nina winter, especially for North America, means that our jet stream is a little bit more variable. So it can go a little bit farther north as well as a little bit farther south. Uh, but what happens is if you have that jet stream pull far to the north, underneath that jet stream, you typically have warmer temperatures as well as drier weather. So in North America, and particularly the western half of the United States, we expect that jet stream to pull a little bit farther north. So that means a little bit better chance of warmer and drier conditions for the winter. Now, that does not include Alaska or parts of Canada because they're going to be on the northern side of that jet stream. So they're more likely to be a little bit cooler. Um, and then across the southern half of the United States, we at least expect warmer, at least slightly warmer than average conditions and possibly a little bit drier weather as well. Um, again, it's all variable, it very much depends on your location. And this is just sort of the general trend for winter. We know that weather and climate are related, but they are not exactly the same thing. So a smaller weather pattern could definitely bring a cold rain or even snow to parts of the southern US, even though we expect in general, on average, the winter in that part of the country to be a little warmer and a little drier. D does it also change the risk of more extreme weather or kind of weather phenomena? Not necessarily. So remember, as we mentioned before already, climate and weather are related, but they're not the same thing. So a climate pattern is typically a little bit longer term. This climate pattern gives us a general idea of what to expect for winter, but we can have one strong storm system that could bring something cooler or snowy to parts of the southern United States where we are expecting it to be a little bit warmer and drier. So one storm system can still bring differences, but overall, this is what we expect for the winter, especially in that southern half of the United States where it's going to be a little bit warmer and drier. And then in the northern half of the United States, even getting into parts of southern Canada, expected to be just a little bit cooler and the weather a little more variable. And you mentioned it also affects the globe more widely. Are they the same kind of pattern, kind of the, that northern band being wetter and colder, and the, or is it kind of entirely different effects depending where you are? It is all about your location. So the way these patterns work is where you have the cooler water, you typically have sinking air, but then it creates the circulation where we tend to have rising air where the warmer water ends up. So in terms of La Nina winters for other parts of the world, um, especially through uh, Southeastern Asia, so like the Philippines, Indonesia, um, and even north of Australia with a La Nina winter, um, it tends to be um, a little bit wetter in those locations because that's where we have sort of the rising air and you're more likely to get um, 
more rain and more thunderstorm development. And you mentioned on the other side of things, people will likely have heard of El Nino as well. How does La Nina compare to El Nino and, and what kind of weather does an El Nino winter bring? Yeah, so we typically think of La Nina and El Nino as being opposites of each other. And they are, but they're not exact opposites. So when you have an El Nino winter, that means the waters in the tropical Pacific are now warmer than average. So the circulation is kind of shifted ever so slightly. So for the United States, um, that typically means uh, that we have warmer weather for sort of northern North America, um, especially in the winter, and then drier weather for, again, other parts of the world for parts of Southeast Asia. So they end up being a little bit drier during El Nino winters, whereas a La Nina winter, which is what we're expecting now, at least a winter in the northern hemisphere, obviously, um, they tend to be a little bit uh, wetter in Southeast Asia. Right. And, and what actually causes these systems to start up? You know, are they predictable in the long term? Or? So they, they are predictable. So it's kind of a seasonal pattern. So in general, they can sort of flip back and forth every three to seven years. Now, the variability of strength also um, varies as well from year to year. Um, but this is one of those climate patterns that is typically always around in some phase or the other. So we're able to again keep an eye on the waters of the tropical pacific and see how are the winds moving in that part of the ocean what are the water temperatures doing and that's how we could normally get a general idea of what we expect going forward whether it's la nina to continue switching to a more neutral phase or even switching completely over into uh, la nina but again we're in la nina right now so again it's it's one of those patterns that we typically see change up a little bit every few years, but it does have an impact on our winter weather and even into summer weather every single year. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us. It's been fascinating. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me. And thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, one Earth, one sky, Earth sky.